question of how I got interested in film uh, is very much the same answer that I think almost anybody of my generation would give. We used to go to the local bug house on Saturday afternoons to see cowboy movies uh, along with a serial and an animated film and so on and so forth. Uh, and they were wonderful, noisy, Jaffa rolling events, uh, which gave us all uh, a fascination for film. When I got a bit older, I discovered the Film Society, uh, and that introduced me suddenly to the idea that film could also be an art. It was a huge leap up for the filmmakers concerned. They'd been making 16 mil short films, and they were desperate to make that leap into 35 mil feature films. We had 70,000 from the newly created New Zealand Film Commission. How do you make a 35 mil feature film on 70,000? Uh, John Maynard, the wonderful producer, managed to squeeze another 110,000 out of various investors, uh, including Amalgamated, the local cinema chain, and uh, I think there was even a massage parlour involved. Um, most of the people involved didn't get paid. Or rather, what happened is we, we got what were called points, which were shares, and if the film went on to make millions of dollars, then we would get paid. But uh, we all had points in the first feature films, and uh, no, nobody ever actually saw anything in, in return. It was quite a battle, because the uh, professors at the university could not see film studies as a legitimate subject. It seemed to be something that you just did for fun. You know, how can you study film? Well, I finally persuaded them around 1975-76 and kicked the course off um, and it fairly rapidly became the biggest uh, MA course, the biggest graduate course at the university, uh, which was of course what they were afraid of because they felt it was going to take students away from the real subjects, uh, which is to say uh, the subjects they were teaching. Uh, but it was the perfect time because the New Zealand film industry was just kicking off at that stage. And since I was teaching the only course of its kind, uh, I had lots of bright young people uh, come and do the course. What I had to offer was film history, uh, primarily at that stage. Uh, you simply couldn't see those films. This was the, this was the era before the internet, it was even before DVDs, and it was even before videos. So the only way that I could get them and screen them was on 16 mil. And often there was only one copy of a famous old film floating around Australasia. So most of my time went into getting hold of those films. But I think it's crucial to see the history of films. You have to know your tradition, you have to know your Fokker Popper. And uh, we also did some theory. When video equipment came along, it was also possible to do practical stuff, and after a few years we did actually establish a, a, a film production outfit. When very good composer Yves de Castro Robinson wanted to do an opera about Len's life, which she thought was just as exciting and colourful as the lives of any of the famous operas, uh, so I did the libretto, and that was uh, quite a learning curve. I'd never written a libretto, uh, and I realised that an opera was quite like a feature film, about the same length. It's a story of a, a various things happening. There's uh, uh, conflicts, there are affairs, um, and it's also expensive. It's just as costly as making a feature film because you need expensive singers and sets and costumes and so forth. So it was a great experience, and uh, we had a successful season um, in, in the uh, Maidment uh, Theatre uh, in Auckland. So I've done, I've done a bit of everything, written books, uh, written an opera, um, and uh, also made a film about Len and uh, worked with a guy. When we started, uh, the local cinema business, uh, people like Sir Robert Kerridge said, you're crazy. You're showing all these weird specialised European films with subtitles, nobody is going to come to them. And to our enormous relief, 
we managed to sell 10,000 tickets in the first year. The second year, we sold 19,000 tickets. The third year, we sold 30,000 tickets and it just continued growing. Uh, it leveled out finally at 100,000 and that's where it is today. It's the, uh, and it's still going. This is the 50th year. This is 2018. It's having its 50th birthday this year. The people on the board of New Zealand On Air when it started were pretty fanatical. Uh, we were determined to get more local content. We were extremely critical of the fact that there wasn't more local production on television. T TVNZ hated New Zealand On Air for the first years because they thought they were making quite enough local production. They didn't want to be bothered with any more. They were concentrating at that time on preparing for their rival. Their first rival, TV3, was just starting and they didn't want to be bothered with anything like local production. But we insisted and by, in a sense, playing TVNZ off against TV3, we managed to make quite a few changes. By the time four or five years had passed, we had, I think, made a difference. Uh, we had a, a soap opera, Shortland Street, which we had proposed and um, set up as a tender between the two broadcasters. Uh, we'd created two, we'd been the catalyst for two uh, street series of documentaries, one on TVNZ and one on TV3, and also some specialised documentary series like Work of Art. Uh, one of the results was a lot more Māori filmmakers, a lot more women filmmakers, a lot of new filmmakers, and really a whole new uh, local production industry had emerged. We can't take credit for all of that, the filmmakers themselves have to take the credit, but New Zealand On Air had made a difference, had been a catalyst. I have a very clear sense of the need for a local industry because I grew up at a time when there wasn't one. In fact, there also were almost no New Zealand plays, there were almost no New Zealand publishers, and there wasn't a great deal of, of New Zealand painting in the galleries. So I know what a colonial situation is like. when, And what that means is a society is not self-critical. It's not able to look at itself and think about itself. Almost Everything in New Zealand which has emerged as something new, like for example, ethnic minorities have entered the mainstream through films. Films, it's a marvellous vehicle for entering public consciousness, for entering the mainstream, and then we can say to ourselves, what is this? What do we think about it? Uh, gay rights was another one. Women entering the film industry. We need film for that self-criticism.